We all know that Einstein was a genius so that his brain would work more than a thousand scientists. Things which we never thought of let alone understand. Einstein worked on those things and, and made it easy for the whole world. Albert Einstein was a physicist who published the theory of special relativity, E equals mc square, and formulating the photoelectric laws and left the world surprised. And therefore, he was awarded the Nobel Prize. Seeing his extraordinary thinking and understanding power, people believe that Einstein had an extraordinary brain which was quite different from ordinary human. Einstein too knew this and therefore, he didn't want his body to be researched upon after his demise. Rather, he had instructed his body to be cremated. But the same happened what Einstein was afraid of. On 13 April 1955, when Einstein died in Princeton Hospital, the doctor came to perform the autopsy, stole Einstein's brain secretly because he was curious to know what's there inside the brain of this genius. Once again, welcome to the Girl's Mind video. The doctor who stole Einstein's brain was Dr. Thomas Harvey, who was more interested in studying this brain than facing the consequences. When the Princeton Hospital came to know about this incident, they fired him. But Dr. Harvey was successful in pursuing Hans Albert to give him permission to research upon his father's brain and let the world know about it. From that day, a long journey started for that brain. Dirt Harvey was a pathologist who knew only about postmortem, And that's why he believed that he would be able to research this genius's brain. But the situation was that Dr. Harvey lost his job in Princeton Hospital and also the designation of a pathologist. Dr. Harvey took Einstein's brain to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania where he took a lot of photos of the brain and cut them into 240 small pieces. And preserving every piece in separate jars, he hid all of them in his basement. Because of this, he had arguments with his wife, as his wife used to threaten him that she will throw this brain outside. The arguments eventually lead to divorce, and Dr. Harvey went Wichita, Kansas with the brain, where he started working as a medical supervisor and here in his free time, he tried to study Einstein's brain. After that, he frequently switched jobs and moved to different cities with the brain. Even after many years, Dr. Harvey couldn't do any solid research on Einstein's brain. Instead, his medical license was canceled. And the situation was so bad for him that he had to start working in a plastics factory. At the time, he made a good decision to send different pieces of the brain to the best neurologist of the world for detailed research. And he did that, 30 years after the brain was stolen. First time in 1985, a study was published on Einstein's brain. For the next 28 years, many neurologists have published several studies on this genius's brain, in which it was found that Einstein's brain was quite different from the ordinary human brain. The biggest difference was found in the corpus callosum part. Now it is important to know that human brain is divided into two parts. Whatever work a human does, it is processed in one part, and then brain sends signal to that part of the body. Left brain controls the right portion of the body, whereas right brain controls the left portion of the body. And for 90% humans, left brain is responsible for speech, understanding, mathematical calculations, and writing. Whereas the right brain is responsible for creativity, understanding of shapes, art, and music. Now you must be thinking, then what is the work of corpus callosum? Imagine you are typing on the keyboard or mobile phone, and while doing this, both our hands are busy typing. Left hand is typing some alphabets, and the right hand is also doing the same. During typing, your left hand made a mistake, and you quickly used your right hand to erase that mistake. That means that when your right brain committed a mistake, it rectified the mistake by signaling the left brain. The link through which both halves of the brain are connected is called corpus callosum. And Einstein's corpus callosum was larger than ordinary humans. That means his left brain and the right brain had a strong connection. 
because of which Einstein could imagine complex problems and situations. Apart from the difference in corpus callosum, Einstein's brain's pattern was also quite different from others. And researchers believe that it was the reason for good neuron flow. Good flow of neurons means that he had great power for mathematical calculations. Albert Einstein had the power of solving complex mathematical problems in his head without using pen and paper. According to a research paper, another reason for having a high number of neurons was that when Einstein's brain was weighted, it was 1230 grams, whereas it is 1400 grams for normal human beings. Researchers believe that his brain's lining was quite thin because of which it contains more neurons. But the biggest question was if Einstein was born with such a special brain or there were changes afterwards. After researching it was found that when Einstein was born, he started speaking after the age of five, whereas other children start speaking at the age of two or three. Even after he started speaking, he didn't like to speak much and remained lost in his own thoughts. He had less memorizing power. And not only that, he find it difficult to memorize simple multiplication table. He was master in processing maths and number in logical ways, rather memorizing them. In his school life, although he failed in other subjects, but he excelled in mathematics and science. When Albert Einstein was 12 years old, a family teacher left his geometry book in Einstein's house. Surprisingly, Einstein read that book in one day and cleared his geometric concepts. Not only that he became master of integral and differential calculus at the age of 14. His grip on maths and science was so strong that professors used to become nervous when he used to raise his hands for asking question because often Einstein's questions were difficult for even teachers to understand. From a very young age, he wanted to encapsulate the laws of the universe in a small equation. And this became his life's mission. At the age of 26, Einstein published four research papers and made the world surprised. And therefore, he was given PhD degree and awarded Nobel Prize for playing outstanding role for humanity. Without Einstein, science is incomplete. Many doctors and scientists came to the conclusion that Einstein's brain became special after his birth. The biggest reason behind it was when he couldn't find an answer to his questions. He tried to find answers with the help of his brain. Doing so from a young age specially developed his brain. Today, Einstein's brain is kept in America's The Mutter Museum which are preserved with great care in microscopic slides. Hope you will like and share this The Girl's Mind video. My heartfelt appreciation for your loving comments. We'll meet you in another amazing video.